Congressman Tim Burchett, one of the brave eight, offered an honest explanation when asked why the GOP was aiding the blocking of the release of the Epstein flight logs. Take a listen. Why in the world would, would good conservatives vote for crazy stuff like what we've been seeing out of Congress? It's that works. You're visiting, you're out of the country or out of town or you're in a motel or bar at, in D.C. and some whatever you're you're into women or men or whatever comes up and they're very attractive and they're laughing at your jokes and and they and you're buying them a drink next thing you know you're in the motel room with them naked and next thing you know you know you're about to make a key vote and what happens some well-dressed person comes up and whispers in your ear hey man there's tapes out on you were you in a motel room on whatever with whoever and then you're like uh-oh and said you really ought not be voting for this thing now, while I don't want to imagine any of them naked, <laughs> I can definitely imagine that happening. Here to discuss is Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you back on the show. I'm definitely not naked. I'm in my <laughs> new Carhartt. Old people, they ask me, is that a new Carhartt? And I say, absolutely, man. You can't hide money. So. <laughs> I love it. Well, it looks great. And thank you for joining us. Congressman, let's start with a 2023 wrap up. What are your thoughts on the top stories of the year? Well, of course, McCarthy being uh, removed, Kevin McCarthy, that was a big story. Um, I still think the biggest thing going is is $34 trillion in, in debt. Nobody seems to be to us. That, to it. It's going to wreck our country. We're going to, we're, we're going off a cliff. And, uh, you know, we've got anarchists that are sitting in the White House controlling this border and, and we're just we're blowing money and spending give 114 billion to, to Ukraine. We can't spend they wouldn't allow Trump to spend four billion on the border. And it's just and we've had eight million people come over that we know of in the last three years. That's the entire population of the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, thousand children. That's particularly uh, troubling to me. Wonder what hell they're in or even if they're alive, anybody knows, if anybody cares. And so, and, you know, we just got our heads in the sand on all this stuff. And I, honestly, I, I you know, and you got a bunch of these do-gooders wanting to negotiate, you know, like with, in Gaza with, with Hamas. And these people are terrorists, they're murderers. And these are the kind of things that, um, these are the people that are running our country. This is what happens when 20 million conservatives decide to stay home on election day and maybe watch The View or something important like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. We need a lot more action taken here. It's sad to see the current state of our country, but at the same time, I'm so grateful for people like yourself and the other uh, seven that, that made such a bold move, especially in the McCarthy situation. Uh, so thank you for all the great work that you've done and continue to do. Now, you've made some waves with the comments you made in the video we played in the intro partly because it's, you know, refreshing to hear that level of honesty, really, and also because you said the quiet part out loud. Now, I find it very interesting that you've had no one really push back with denials. Why did you so boldly make those statements? Because I don't answer to those people. They're not my overlords. Honestly, I answer to God, but I answer to my voters. And um, I live in a pretty conservative area of the country, thank goodness. People are moving <laughs> roads from outside California, New York. And you know what? Everybody freaks out like oh, a bunch of liberals. Yeah, they talk funny. <laughs> but, but East Tennessee is the only place in America where people don't speak with an accent, obviously. But you know what they tell me? They say, Tim, you've got it really good here. We know how bad it is because we just came from it. And our job is to keep you all from going in that direction. And they turn out to be some of the most conservative voters I have. Uh, or folks that are that are transplants or they're refugees, as they like to call themselves. <laughs> so pretty apparent. But I, I, people are fed up and um, and we need answers. This Epstein thing is a joke. If you saw Dick Durbin in an interview, you know, Marsha Blackman's a dear friend of mine. She and I are in the <laughs> state Senate together. See, my dogs don't even like it. <laughs> uh, uh, he's probably barking, barking at a squirrel. But no. <laughs> So Dick Durbin, in an interview, they asked him about Epstein. He said, I, I don't know what you, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, nobody's talking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is talked about prisoner in the world at the time is allowed to allegedly commit suicide is, um, you know, you've got this list of people and he ran the honeypot. That was his MO with these big cats and they're, and they're perverts. And um, if they mess with children, 
we need to send them to hell because this thing, it, it is just wrong, wrong, wrong. And for anybody to stand in the way, and Dick Durbin, I know he's buddies with Bill Clinton, but you know what? If there's a Republican on that list, let's fry them too. I do not care. I'm so sick of this perversion. And, it, you know, they talk about sex with children. It's not sex with a child. It's it's violence with yeah. a child. And it is it is just, to me, I've, I've passed laws dealing with this for years. And getting through the Tennessee legislature is like pulling teeth. I even passed the death penalty for, for child rape. It was ruled unconstitutional. But, you know, it's it's just... It's out of control, ma'am, and um, and we need to we need to yank the yank the curtain off this thing because it is it is getting worse and worse in this world when we allow this version to become mainstream. You know, you're you're hearing college professors overseas um, saying, you know, how this is a, this is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's not a lifestyle, ma'am. It is a criminal act of violence done to a child. It and most certainly is. Yeah. yeah clear about it, what what needs to happen. You know, I'd rather have a millstone tied around her neck and thrown into a lake rather than deal with an angry God angry our angry God on this. And and I agree with it. I I'm I we cannot allow this to go on. And I and I've had enough. I I I got a sixteen year old daughter and I lay awake at night. That's the that is the thing that I worry about is her future and with all these sickos. Of course Tennessee we have we still have justice here. Yeah. One way or the other You'll get justice here, but but you know it, it's it's rapidly encroaching on us. I see it every day, and I see the excuses made, and and it's a it's an uh, it is an unfixable situation, and the only way to fix it is remove them from society, and these people need to go. Absolutely. I ran it and rave. I went over my time on that. I realized No, no, that. it's all good. I love hearing it, and I think it is so true and so necessary. We need uh, action here. These people need to be held accountable. We need these flight logs released. We need every single person investigated, and if anyone participated in the rape of minors, they need to be criminally prosecuted. It is just despicable. It is so disgusting that this is happening in our country on such a wide scale, and so, again, I'm just so grateful for your work in this and trying to raise awareness on the issue, so thank you so much much for that congressman with that we are unfortunately all out of time for today but thank you again for joining us and happy new year to you thank you ma'am and thank y'all for putting out the truth because it matters absolutely always